Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah al -Brik. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 50 of the year 2022, restructuring the office of the Prime Minister. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 51 of the year 2022, amending some provisions of Decree 62 of the year 2008 on restructuring the office of the Deputy Prime Minister as follows. The phrase Office of the Prime Minister's Advisor shall replace the phrase Office of the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned in the title of Decree 62 of the year 2008 on restructuring the office of the Deputy Prime Minister as well as wherever it appears in its first article. His Majesty the King issued Royal Decree 52 of the year 2022, restructuring the Ministry of Works. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 53 of the year 2022, restructuring the Social Development Ministry. His Majesty the King issued Royal Decree 54 of the year 2022, restructuring the Ministry of Light Labour. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 55 of the year 2022, restructuring the Cabinet Affairs Ministry. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of honour. His Royal Highness Prince William's appointment as uh, the Prince of Wales. His Royal Highness highlighted the deep-rooted ties between Bahrain and the UK and stressed that under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Bahrain is committed to continue strengthening relations between the two royal families and the people of the two kingdoms. He expressed his best wishes of success to His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales in his duties continuing his great work in empowering the British people to achieve their aspirations. Aspirations. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the UK Ambassador to Bahrain to offer condolences over the demise of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was welcomed on arrival by the UK Ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond. His Highness conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King and offered Bahrain's condolences to the British royal family the UK and the British people recalling the good qualities of the late Queen Elizabeth II, who dedicated her life to promote the UK standing at all levels and boost the friendly relations with Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his most sincere wishes to His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and head of the Commonwealth to continue the march of development in the UK. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the UK's ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, to offer his condolences following the demise of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. His Highness emphasized the strength of long standing Bahrain UK relations, which continue to receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness wrote an entry in the Book of Condolences in which he expresses sincere condolences to the King of the UK and Northern Ireland and head of the Commonwealth, His Majesty King Charles III, as well as to the members of the royal family and the people of the UK. His Highness commended Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's lifelong dedication to the UK, the Commonwealth and their people. He noted Her Majesty the Queen's pivotal role in fostering strong relations between Bahrain and the UK and their people. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, accompanied by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad Al Malki, visited the residence of the UK's Ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, to offer condolences on the demise of Queen Elizabeth II. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that with the demise of the Queen, the world has lost a prominent figure who dedicated her efforts to serve her nation and its people and to enhance her country's relations with friendly countries, particularly Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Deputy Prime Minister expressed sincere condolences to the UK, recalling the contributions of Queen Elizabeth II to spreading the concepts and values of tolerance and harmony. He noted that the large official and popular interaction following the news of Her Majesty's demise reflected her high status and the international respect and appreciation. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed his sincere wishes of continuous progress and prosperity to the UK with the leadership of His Majesty King Charles III. For his part, the Ambassador to Bahrain expresses thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister for his sentiments towards the deceased. He affirmed that the deep-rooted bilateral relations that extend over two centuries will contribute to further cooperation and coordination. 
Queen Elizabeth II's flag-draped coffin is passing through the rugged Scottish countryside on a final journey from her beloved summer estate, Belmore Castle, to London. With mourners quietly lining roads and some tossing flowers to honour the monarch who died after 70 years on the throne. The hearse drove past piles of bouquets and other tributes as it led a seven-car cortege from Balmore, where the Queen died on Thursday for a six-hour trip through Scottish towns to Holyrood House, House Palace in Edinburgh. The late Queen's coffin was draped in the royal standards for Scotland and topped with a wreath made of flowers from the estate, including sweet peas, one of the Queen's favourites. Sunday's solemn drive through Scotland comes a day after the Queen's eldest son was formally proclaimed the new monarch, King Charles III, at a pomp-filled accession ceremony steeped in ancient tradition and political symbolism. Britain's Crown Prince William said he would honour the memory of his grandmother Queen Elizabeth II by working to support his father King Charles III in a statement. Prince William said all of the sadness that is felt in the coming weeks will be a, a testament to the love the kingdom had for its extraordinary queen. Prince William, aged 40, who is now the heir to the throne, also praised his grandmother for providing an example of service and dignity in public life that was from a different age. On Friday, King Charles bestowed on William, the title Prince of Wales, which he previously held. The Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Brainin issued two organizational edicts following the issuance of the royal decree regarding setting the date for elections and candidacy for membership in the Council of Representatives, as well as the Cabinet's decision regarding setting the date for elections and candidacy for the Municipal Council's membership. The Attorney General issued Edict Number 51 of the year 2022 to form a committee of prosecutors with comprehensive judici judicial throughout the kingdom to investigate an act on electoral crimes that violate the provisions of laws related to the electoral process of the Council of Representatives and the Municipal Councils. As for the second edict number 52 of 2022, it stipulates that the formation of a committee to examine and study the applications received from the supervisory committees on the electoral process with regard to the candidates and to take the necessary measures in this regard within a maximum period of three days from the date of receiving the application. The edicts of the Attorney General came within the framework of organizing the work of the public prosecution in preparation for carrying out its tasks and exercising its legally established competencies during the upcoming stages of the electoral process. They also aim to ensure a speedy processing of the applications related to candidacy for membership of the Council of Representatives and Municipal Councils, as well as the rapid investigation and response to notifications on electoral crimes. The invitation or the initiation of restricted cases about them before the courts and the review of sentences issued in them. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Ahmedan, has called for integrating job seekers in the private medical sector by rehabilitating and training them in collaboration with the relevant entities, as well as by taking advantage of the existing detailed and integrated database. He stressed the importance of integrating national competencies in the labour market in light of the economic recovery plan launched by the government in many promising sectors. He said that several initiatives aimed at integrating job seekers in Bahrain's private medical sector are being implemented as part of the joint efforts to implement the provisions of Law 1 of the year 2019, amending Article 14 of Decree Law 21 of the year 2015 with respect to private health institutions, which gives priority to hiring Bahrainis in private medical institutions. For her part, the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, has stated that the private medical sector in the kingdom is growing rapidly with the increasing number of institutions that provide many rewarding employment opportunities. She expressed her hope that the ongoing joint efforts will lead to increasing the number of Bahraini staff in this promising sector, highlighting the growing positive cooperation with the private sector in hiring Bahrainis. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Barak bin Dana, inaugurated the preparatory workshop organized by the Supreme Council for the Environment in cooperation with a number of supporting authorities with the aim of raising the readiness of the delegation participating in the 27th edition of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP27, to be held in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, next November. 
The minister affirmed that Bahrain gives considerable importance to the environment sector as a result of the support it receives from His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister. He noted that formulating policies to protect and sustain environmental and natural resources will continue. Dr. Bendena referred to the directives of the personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, regarding the importance of continuing efforts to fulfill Bahrain's obligations related to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. He noted that Team Bahrain that will participate in the conference will undertake a great task to inform the participating delegations of the Kingdom's active role in promoting international climate cooperation. The Ministry of Health affirmed the continuation of coordination in health aspects between the two school health departments with the Ministry of Education to ensure the safety of school health during the school year. The school health department at the Ministry of Health, in cooperation with the Disease Control Department, organized a number of awareness-raising workshops on the prevention of infectious diseases for those concerned. In all public and private schools, inspections visits were co coordinated in cooperation with the Ministry of Education to ensure that all schools adhere to preventative health measures in schools which also include checking water safety and canteens in addition to harnessing all health services to facilitate students access to the necessary health care.